you ever used dual monitors and thought to yourself, I wish this was one giant 32 by nine monitor? Well, that's what we have right here. This is the NOCN 43.8 inch ultra wide 44C1G. Now this is 3840 by 1080, a curious and strange resolution. It's essentially two 24 inch 1080p monitors smacked side by side. It's an IPS panel and the refresh rate is 120 Hertz. We'll just say this right now, it's beautiful for gaming. And I don't think one of them is enough. So I'm gonna stack two of these things. This is what I really wanted to do. Play Dusk in 4K on two gigantic 43.8 inch ultra wide screens. You know, we also have Dusk t-shirts on the store. So if you're worthy, head over to epicpants.com. Every time you buy one of these, I send like four bucks over to Dave. So, uh, you know, the kids at New Blood can make more games for us. That's enough of this. Let's talk about less serious things. I use OEM keys for a few different reasons. This is the price you're gonna pay for Windows 11 Pro if you get a retail key. Let's check those prices on whokeys.com. $30, no, we can do better. But in TS25, click apply. There we go, 2322. You got Windows 11 Pro and Home. Same with Windows 10 Pro and Home. We now have LTSC versions. This version of Windows 10 will give you security updates until 2032. And it doesn't come with any bloat or AI nonsense, no copilot, no recall. The same for Windows 11. The LTSC SC editions are volume licenses, usually acquired in the same way you would get an OEM key. And I made a video on where these keys come from. I'll link that below. So if you have any qualms about using a volume license key, then just grab one of the regular keys. I don't, they work. And so I'm gonna grab one. And we have two flavors of Office. If you're sick of paying that monthly subscription, well, you can get yourself an offline version of Office 2019 or Office 2016. Let's go ahead and check out with our copy of Windows 11 Pro. All right, just put in my card info. There we go. Click on view keys and codes. Once you get to the user center, click on get the key. You'll see your key right here in the middle. Go ahead and highlight that, copy that, press start, and then type activate. You'll see activation settings. Go ahead and click on that. And then right here, it says not active. Just click on change product key. Paste in our product key and then click on activate. Hey, look at that, active. Head over to whokeys.com. Thanks to them for sponsoring. And now on to our regularly scheduled program. I was about to render this video and they messaged me saying that they're going to have some really big deals for Prime Day. So I wanted to make sure that everyone in the audience hears about this. This video is not sponsored, but yeah, if you're going to grab one of these, just check the Prime Day deals. All right, let's take a look at this monitor, starting with the stand. Well, we got two of these things stacked up on a monitor arm. I'll put a link to the monitor arm I'm using in the description. But before we do that, let's talk about the monitor for a second and I'll show you the stand that it comes with because, you know, I got this fancy stand and everything, this monitor arm. and then the stand that it comes with is awesome. It's just like a really nice Dell stand. The flat footprint on the desk is nice because don't have, I don't like the ones that have tons of feet and stuff. Flat one's great because you can put something on top of it. You can put, a, you know, a stream deck on top of it. You can put a speaker on top of it. You can put your wallet and your business cards. I don't know, you can put stuff on top of that. And we have our cable routing options there with the hole in the middle. And then we have a lot of motion right there. You can move it up and down, pivot, swivel, pivot, skiv it. You can do all kinds of things with it. Tilt angles forward five, backward 15 degrees. It lifts 120 millimeters. The horizontal swivel angle, is 30 and uh, 30 left and 30 right. So yeah, one button quick release. Uh, I really like the monitor stand. Like I said, it feels just like one of those premium Dell monitor stands with the quick release and everything else. I also got a 100 by 100 Visa mount uh, on the back and that's what I'm using to put it on this monitor arm right here. The viewing angle is 170 degrees because it's IPS. Then as far as the gamut goes, we've got 99% of the sRGB gamut and 96% of the DCI P3 gamut. Color's pretty good. It also is HDR 400, which is kind of just checking that box. I generally think HDR 400 looks a little bit washed out for me. Brightness 350, contrast ratio is 1001, and the response time is two milliseconds. You know what, right now, let's just go ahead and check out the ghosting. I like to play Dusk when I'm doing tests for ghosting. So let's just see what we got right here. And I swing my camera around. There, look at that. It's, you got one right there. I've seen some monitors, where I would swing my mouse back and forth and you would see like five or six trails. That's not bad. And also I wanna note that you see three, they're all the same color. Lower quality monitors, a lot of times you'll see one in the regular color, but like the green or the blue will lag behind or maybe whatever, one of the other colors will lag behind. And so the next images will be garish and green and it'll look weird. This one, it does have ghosting. 
medium ghosting, not crazy. It's not the best thing I've ever seen, not the worst thing I've ever seen. The ghosting is consistent. For IPS, I feel like this is on the better end. Anyway, I'm gonna give this like a seven out of 10 when it comes to ghosting, not too bad. Still more to cover and I just wanna talk about playing games on this thing, but no, we gotta cover more. So how can you use it? Well, we've got a bunch of ports on the back. Let's take a look at those, shall we? You have an HDMI 2.0. We've got an HDMI 1.4. The 2.0 is what you want to use if you want that 120 hertz. Also, FreeSync Premium giving you the entire refresh hertz range of beautiful FreeSync, which is adaptive sync. Uh, we've got DisplayPort 1.2, and we've got a Type-C that can also do 65 watts. And we got an audio out in the back right there. And with that 65 watt, if you've got like a mini PC or a laptop or something that doesn't need that much power, you can just plug it in and have everything working together. But net weight is 11.525 kilograms. The gross weight is 15.17 kilograms. Uh, the size of this, it's pretty big, including the base. It's 1,090 millimeters by 526 by 221.6. Six. Use all that when you're figuring out which monitor arm you want. The one I'm using, I'll put a link to that in the description. It was plenty strong enough. It was like up to 40 pounds. And this thing is like 20-ish something pounds. We've got a built-in speaker. It's a speaker. It's there. Whatever. Now, this also supports picture in picture. And you can do that with your Android phone or whatever, which is kind of cool on a screen like this. You can have half the monitor for, you know, HDMI and the other half the monitor for DisplayPort. You can do it that way. Or you can have picture in picture going... You can also set it up so that like your Android phone or whatever, whatever devices, I don't share any of my stuff over the, the thing, but you can set it up so that your phone is on the screen and then the other part of your screen is your computer or whatever. You can set it up all those different ways. All right, now I wanna talk about gaming. We'll talk about productivity in a second, but I think this is kind of special for gaming because I had a 32 by nine monitor. It was like 50, 120, some huge resolution by 1440. So it was like the 1440 version of this. This is 3840 by 1080. And I thought that that was going to be maybe a bit um, squished, you know, only 1080, but it's not. It's a lot easier to drive as well. It's a lot easier to drive as well. And when you think, think about, you know, 4K, this is essentially a 4K monitor cut in half. So it's going to be, you know, half as hard to drive as a 4K monitor, meaning you're not going to have to have a super beefy graphics card and you'll be able to get this glorious widescreen. I loved using my giant 1440p version of this. It was huge. This one is a little bit smaller and it's given me exactly the same feeling. At a comfortable sitting distance, I'm not seeing the pixels. You know, as long as you're, you know, a few feet back, it's fine. It's just pretty much the same as having, as long as you're sitting back enough that you can see the whole thing, it's beautiful. And gaming on this is extremely immersive because it like you wraps around and you start seeing the periphery like just some motion and color and stuff happening if you're focused on the center of the screen just that extra little bit on the side is awesome played a lot of different games with this the first person games and the flight sims and everything were a ton of fun did i play mech warrior on this i'm not sure if i you know recorded myself playing mech warrior but that was also a lot of fun now when it comes to stacking up two of these things kind of spoiled me that really messed with my brain. I got really used to having an extra monitor up on top. It's so cool and handy. So even if you already have a setup and you want to get like an arm and just put one of these on top, it's essentially like smacking two screens up above you. Use fancy zone. Just Google that, download it. It'll let you snap things to however you want. You can set up your own snapping zones and snap your windows to all kinds of different places. It's a really cool experience. You can have like your office work on one side of the monitor, have a video on the other running at 1080p, and then on the bottom have a game or something and you can like be watching a tutorial on a game that you're playing, which I don't like doing. It's better to discover things on your own, but maybe you're stuck and I don't know. Or maybe you're watching a stream at the same time as you're playing the game and you're stream sniping. These are all bad scenarios. Speaking of sniping, you can turn on some gaming reticles and stuff in the middle of the screen. You can turn those on if you want to be a cheater because they are actually on the screen and not in the game and people won't see them while you're streaming. All right, let's talk about streaming for just a minute because a monitor like this is gonna be weird for streaming. If you wanna play games at the full ridiculous resolution, it's gonna be a bit weird for streaming because most people are watching this on not a super ultra widescreen. So it's gonna be kind of strange if you're streaming at 1080p or whatever. So what you can do is run the game in windowed and run it at 1080p. And then on the second half of your screen, you can put Twitch and all the different chats and everything else, just whatever, or whatever your toolbars and stuff, you can do that. It's almost like having two screens. And if you're playing a console, you can physically have two screens in one. You can hook up your console to, you know, and have it be half the screen. And, you know, if you're running like an Avermedia or whatever else, you can have that capture all running through and make it work. Am I making sense here? I don't know if I am or not, but I think you get the idea. 
Now, the thing that surprised me the most is the fact that this is lower resolution, but I actually liked it a lot more than the high resolution 32 by 9 that I used to have that was 1440p. Like, I liked it a lot more. That one was just too big and too wide. This feels manageable. It feels actually usable for the gaming experience felt to me pretty much the same. It's just super wide. That, that Forget the pixels. It's just a super wide, awesome experience that just immerses you, which is what we all want now. Everybody talks about immersion all the time. Yeah, I really feel like you're in the game. So for gaming, I love these super wide monitors. But the thing that spoiled me and the thing that I, makes me want to take one of these with me is I loved having one on top. Like whatever setup I have, it's really cool to just throw one of those on top. Here's, a, here's an idea. Say you got all your stuff on the bottom and you're doing like some tech work or whatever you do if you work at home. Sometimes there's things that come up. There's emergencies or whatever. And you have to minimize stuff that you're doing and then work on of put out a fire or to do whatever's happening with an emergency or there's something that's going on and then once you're finished with that you're like where was i and there's this context shift that takes 10 15 minutes of being like oh, okay i click on this click on that get all your stuff back up put one of these big things on top whenever there's an emergency just lean back shift your focus up there and do all your work on the top screen and then when you're finished close it open up whatever you want a movie or some music or something up there look back down and there's all the stuff you were working on before there's not going to be nearly as much of a jostle when it comes to shifting your context back to whatever you were working on in the first place. Just an idea. Anyway, I'm just showing footage of me playing games and Oblivion and whatever else. I don't know. That's pretty much all I got to say. It's it's awesome. I liked playing on this. I've had good luck with NOCN as well. I've used a couple of their different products in the last year and just, like I said, I had pretty good luck with them. This stuff, half price right now. All the hardware, all of it, half price right now. Coupon code is Happy Hardware. The discount will show up at the checkout. I found a couple copies of Windows 98 recently. So if you want to, this is brand new in the shrink wrap. I found three of these. Three of them. And, uh, you know, I paid a few hundred dollars to get all three of them because that was how they were selling them in a bundle. I'm keeping one of them and then I'm going to put the other two on here. So if you want like a beautiful box copy, this is a big box copy right here with the CompUSA sticker on there. Well, there you go. I'm trying to price it cheaper than eBay. If you're seeing people on eBay selling it way cheaper than this, let me know. But that's, I was seeing them for substantially more than this anyway. That's the end of the video. See you later.